Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Tabletop Table Talk. And this is just a show where literally I am talking to you on ways to be a um, better storyteller, dungeon master, game master, and just to help you be more motivated to tell stories. Now, one of the best ways to do it, in my opinion, is you, you kind of need to know how to be able to make the characters, how the character sheets work, how they actually fundamentally how the buttons work, to be honest. Um, If you've been here before, you know that this show is very unscripted. It is me sitting here having a conversation, reading through the chat, talking to all of you, as well as sometimes learning new things that I never would have expected. If you're watching this on YouTube later, I appreciate the support and I have still been seeing the comments and it it's awesome seeing that everyone has come in. And if you're watching me live right now, thank you for coming and spending uh, your... Water is important. Thank you for coming and spending your Friday with me and good time zone. I think I introduced myself. <coughs> My name is Gabe. I am a game designer, cosplayer, and voice actor. I'm the in-house game designer for Roll20. And today we're going to go over some stuff that is just the character mancer. So let's get into it. I can still hear myself in the background and I didn't want it. Get out of my head, other Gabe. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So I'm actually going to switch over right now to bam, this screen. So if you are making a game, this is going to be a screen that is very, very important for you. Literally, you open up Roll20, you make a game, and then it gives you the option to create a game. You click create a game, it brings you to this screen. When you're here, literally name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name it Bingus. Uh, and we're going to use the D&D 5e character sheet. Dungeons and Dragons. 5e by Roll20. That's the character sheet we're going to use because that is the one that has the character mancer built into it. And that is the prime reason that we're here. There are other systems that are getting character mancers made for them. Before you ask, I don't have the distinct answer on when they will be done. Um, and if I did, I promise you I'd, I'd be a very horrible liar. <laughs> but I will be happy to tell you about when those are done as soon as I know. But I know that there are more character mantras coming for the games that we have on Roll20. So please stay tuned for that. But you know what? I selected my character sheet. I named my game. And then I just click I'm ready. Create game. Okay. So you can invite players. You can change the file. You can add specific content that you want. Uh, you can convert it to dynamic lighting, all of that stuff. But that is really cool stuff that we've talked about in previous episodes or we'll talk about another day. I cannot wait to get into this character mancer. So let's do it. Also, you see that I've I've spent a lot of time on Rule 20. Uh, 1,300 hours. And I'm proud of it. Okay. Oh, Call of Cthulhu has a character mancer. I didn't realize. Okay. So this... If some of this seems too obvious, I partially apologize because I want to approach this in a sense that like uh, anyone who doesn't know this stuff can access it and see it even if they're starting from scratch. So we're just going to dive into it right here. Going to literally click the little newspaper, add character that is literally all you have to do to add a character um and then you can do that as many times as you want to if you want to make it so that it's in like a specific player's journal you literally click here you can type whose journal it in whose journal it's in it can be in all of your players journal if you wanted to it could be in specific players then there's even can be edited and controlled by so maybe i wanted everyone to see this character glaxelli Irapuk. I wanted everyone to know that the character existed. I want everyone to be able to see this sheet loosely, but it could only be controlled by Gabriel. So like I'm the player who's controlling it, but everyone can see the name. Everyone can reference it. Everyone knows it's there. So if you're making uh, an avatar for the picture, you can literally just upload a picture. You can drag and drop a picture in. And if you want that to be the token, which is the art that you see right on the map, you can just drop that down there. There's a bunch of different ways to add to tokens. You can make flippable tokens. Um, but again, 
I want to tell you what's possible, and then I want to show you the stuff that is just the core mechanics to learn how it works. You can add all the bio info in, but you know what? Let's let's name the character Bingo. Bingo was his name. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be that kind of day, y'all. So we have our character Bingo. Then we just click character sheet. How do you want to create this character? Use Character Mancer, create NPC, edit sheet directly. So if you wanted to just input all the stuff yourself, you would edit sheet directly. If you wanted to make an NPC, that's where that button is for. If you wanted to do the Character Mancer, we can do the Character Mancer. Now I keep saying the word Character Mancer. The Character Mancer is basically the system calculating the math for you, adding in the abilities and stuff for you uh, automatically instead of you having to do it manually. I'm a big fan of that because I like just making character ideas and sometimes being able to just have them in one place makes a world of a difference for me. So we're just we're just going to click use the character mancer. All right. The character mancer is a step-by-step -step process that makes building a character simple and streamlined. And the character mancer does get updated um, as new things are released for Dungeons and Dragons. Or like if Call of Cthulhu, when new things are released for that game, the character mancer is updated on our end as well. So we try to keep it updated and consistent. And even if it's not like right at release, the stuff does get added in. Like there is the stuff that was added in from Sword Coast, DMs Guild, not DMs Guild, Dungeon Master's Guide. <sighs> Too many acronyms. But so it has the compendium, uh, SRD, player's handbook. You can add the stuff in the marketplace and then it comes into your character mancer. So let's just go ahead and click next. Uh, so race. And the other cool thing is that as the ta uh, Tasha's stuff was added, it was added into the character mancer to customize your origin. So there are so many races that are available through the different books, uh, the stuff of like Cobalt Press that is on Roll20's Marketplace, all of that combined, there's so, so, so many options. Uh, but for today, let's, let's be a tabaxi named Bingo. I like that. But we don't want to do the ability score increase just by like Dex and Charisma. We want to use the way Tasha's did it. We want to be able to select that. All we have to do, click customize your origin, and it lets you pick. Where is the plus two going? Where is the plus one going? So you know what? We're actually going to make this a Dabaxi that is very durable. They have spent time training and practicing and doing endurance. So we're going to increase their constitution. But also, they're very charming with what they do. It's, it's literally just giving you that option, which is stuff that we wanted for so long. And now that we have the official rule set leaning into it, we made sure that Roll 20's character mancer was adjusted with that. Then it goes through, it tells you the size, speed, the proficiencies uh, from the cat's talent, as well as normal skill proficiencies. And all of this stuff that you're seeing, it's telling you this because this is the character creation process. It wants you to know what you're going to get. But when the character sheet is done, it's just going to input all of that for you. So we get to pick a language proficiency. Let's go bird folk. A tabaxi that speaks the bird folk language just, I don't know, I, I enjoy that. We have the different skills, dark vision, feline agility, uh, cat's claws, all good. So we're gonna go to the class next. All right, let's go ahead and pick a bard. Um, fun fact, I have never played a bard in all of my years of Dungeons and Dragons and many have tried to get me to, all have failed. All of them. So again, we're still just picking skill proficiencies. Let's go with deception, insight, intimidation, die. Is there? Yeah. Yeah, there's no E. And then tool proficiencies. So we're just, again, popping this stuff in. It doesn't really matter specifically what this is. And after you get used to it, this goes by pretty dang fast. So all the other things from a bar, bardic inspiration, ritual casting, even the equipment that comes into it. Then there is ability scores, so we can do it a bunch of different ways. We could do standard array. If you don't know what standard array is, it's 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then you basically just click, like I want the 15 in strength, I want the 10 in dex, I want the 13 in constitution, and you're just going down the line selecting which one. The other thing is, you can do point by. Point by, it gives you the points, and then you just select where you want your things to be. And as you're spending the points when you're buying it, it literally drops down how much you have to spend. 
you can just click clear assignment reset it very easy so if you wanted to do point by or standard array this makes it super easy to do it my personal preference is i love rolling and the biggest way that i love doing it is rolling the 4d6 dropping the lowest that's even built into the character manager so we can literally click this and it literally does it for you now if you hover over it you see uh it rolled a two three four and a six and it dropped the two because it was row four drop the lowest and then it creates an, a list for all of them now if you're like if you have someone you're like ah you know what you can roll a couple times i'm like ah, i don't like that one let's try again roll again and it replaces it with the newest one you rolled this one was way worse uh there's a six in there and a seven let's give it one more try <laughs> you know what that's pretty good we're playing and we're playing we're playing our bard so i'm just going to go ahead and drop that 18 in charisma be the charming figure you want to be uh don't really care about strength so we're going to drop the 10 in there mm, don't really care about constitution as much there's a lot of 11s we're just you know what 10 strength 14 dex and then 11 11 11 is that a reference to something it might be but i can't think of it right now literally so now our stats are done you can even scroll down see what the modifier numbers are going to be if you wanted to but again it does all the work for you it even shows you where your hit points are actually going to be with the constitution it tells you suggested abilities based on the class so if you wanted to basically build your character around those abilities when you're rolling and doing it here all of this information is on the same page, which again, makes one hell of a difference because I do remember having to flip back and forth through different pages and books. It sucked. But welcome to the future. It even tells you though, your spells casting ability, if it has spell casting, if it doesn't, if it's like a fighter or uh, a barbarian, it's not gonna have that number, but you will see these things. So then again, the third part of really putting together who your character is, the background. Just like this, there are so many different options, just from all of the stuff on the marketplace, as well as the stuff that's generally just in the SRD. You can even see like uh, Skag, which is Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Oh, with a custom class living music. Let me show you. So if we go back to class, you can actually scroll down there's a custom button. You can name the class and let's call the class uh, living sound. The hit die of a living sound is a D8. Saving throw proficiency, it's actually gonna be charisma and strength. And it's gonna have a proficiency in a weapon. We could pick the weapon, let's make it a club. It also has proficiency in a skill, which is investigation. And then you can add whatever proficiencies you want, which can be languages, it can be skills, armor, weapons, technology. You could literally make them have a saving their proficiency in four things if you wanted to. Uh, you can add all the custom class features, and if it has a spell casting ability, you put it down here. It's super easy for adding in the custom classes. And if you want, this, this is a great opportunity where if you wanted to practice seeing how a custom class would roll and trying to balance it out and you wanted you wanted to do a bunch of rolls you wanted to test with advantage with disadvantage you wanted to test in a mock battle with a creature this is a great way to do it because you can do all of your testing here you can have all of it recorded you could have a game that you made specifically just for testing and it works i i may have one of these and this may or may not be where like when I come up with my random homebrew ideas of like, you know what? I want this barbarian that actually when they rage, they make a duplicate of themselves. And the duplicate is actually the manifestation of their rage. And so I would literally like I, I went in and I was like, rage barbarian, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. put that stuff in. And I made a whole custom class. Yeah, yeah, you can add in the custom stuff as you do it. But the other thing that's really cool is I'm actually going to go back to the bard um, and I'm going to go through and add this stuff because this is this is why this thing is really freaking cool. Um, I 
<laughs> I've learned about myself that when I get genuinely excited about something, I don't hide it. And I have no shame about it. But you can tell, like, this is this is something that I'm actually very passionate about. So I'm just going to pick a background. We're going to go with athlete. I was going to say athletic, but that is a whole different thing. Uh, I already have bird folk. So let's go celestial. They can speak bird folk and celestial. And if you when you have those like generation things, again, this is the beautiful thing about using the character manager. I don't know what I want to pick for any of this. So I'm just going to click roll. Favorite event is a marathon. Uh, obstacles exist to be overcome. I love to trade banter and guy gibbs jibes. I don't know why people let me be a voice actor. <laughs> uh, camaraderie. The strongest bonds are forged through struggle, which is a good ideal. My mistake got someone hurt. I'll never make that mistake again is my bond. And my flaw, well, I have lingering pain from old injuries. If you did want to look like and you didn't want to just click to open the scroll thing, it is always listed in this sidebar right here, but it's there. So how would you like to choose your starting equipment? Again, super, super easy. You can literally just pick the class equipment and it'll do give you the options for picking all of the stuff like rapier, longsword, or any simple weapons. It'll list all the simple weapons. Choose which of the two packs you want, which instrument you want. Let's just go with a hand axe. Uh, let's go a bronze discus and a lucky charm. That is one of my favorite cereals and I haven't had it in a long time. Uh, and then when you get to the spells, since this is a spell casting class, it gives you the options for the spells. Now, I do have some of the books from like the, again, the Cobalt Press and other, other influences of creating the homebrew content. So there's some cool, weird, neat things on here like telekinetic trip and stuff like oh my gosh so we're just eldritch blast uh i'm just gonna drop some on there anchoring rope blinding pain converse with dragon that sounds neat um pendulum hmm i like coffee pros pyros that's even cooler <laughs> okay so level one don't have a feed or anything just because i picked the tabaxi and bard but then we go to bio name age any of this stuff any of this stuff you actually don't have to fill this stuff in technically you technically don't have to fill in any of the stuff but filling the stuff in in the character mantor just adds it to your sheet when you're done so we're going to go ahead click next again review it reviews everything that we just went over puts it in a nice little spot shows us all of our stats and we're good we're going to click apply changes Building your character. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's it. So it calculates your armor class, your initiative, your speed, arranges it all like this to make your life easy. And again, I do this because there are plenty of people who have like even had a little bit of interest in playing on Roll20. And like Call of Cthulhu, Dungeons and Dragons, and a few other games, uh that don't have the character mancer will have them, but just knowing how to navigate it and see how it works. Because if you're looking to play another game, the character mancer, it's going to be different for that game, obviously, but it's going to run you through very similar prompts. And it's just knowing how to do it. So honestly, there's probably a day that we'll go through a Call of Cthulhu character mancer. Um, actually, I think, I think we went, no, actually we did. We did go through the Call of Cthulhu character mancer uh, when I talked with, I think, that Salty Ginger. That was fun. Oh, my! I think my character was a silver fox. Like, old man, charming, weird. That's what I aspire to be. But that's a whole separate point. <laughs> so it even tells you how many bardic inspiration. You see all of the features that you have on the right side, which include racial and class even says it right here. If you want to know what they are, you can click it. If you want to put it in chat, you can click that box right there. It puts it in the chat box. So we have, what else do we have? We have leather armor down here and you see how it has a check mark next to it. That means that it's equipped, it's on you. So armor class right up here. If we go ahead and unclick leather armor, Boom, it goes down by one because we weren't still equipped with the leather armor. It actually does calculate that stuff just by clicking it on and off. And the nice thing is I, I do really enjoy this sheet because so much of it's all in one page. 
that helps a lot. Proficiency is down in the bottom left. Uh, and But this this is the general character sheet and how you put it together with a character mancer. So let's say, um, before we get too far, there's this gear over here. If you're ever in Roll20 and you want to use Advantage, at the very top of the right, there's Advantage Toggle. You click that, it'll let you roll with or without Advantage. So like, I want to roll with Advantage, we're going to click Claws. This time it rolls two. Roll with Disadvantage, rolls two. And it does that for you. It does that for you, save you a lot. Is that a nat one? We're off to a great start. So that's super easy. Something else that you can do right here, the very top of that right section, there's a button that says NPC. Uh, clicking NPC, it actually changes the character sheet to be an NPC's character sheet. See? So I don't have as much filled in. There aren't really the same actions, but it's asking me what do I want like the vulnerabilities for. So once you already have like stats, equipment and stuff like that built in, you can click NPC and it'll convert your sheet over to NPC pretty well. Now, uh, earlier, Living Music, you were asking about like the custom class and such. So you can even multi-class into a custom class. You can change the spell slot modifiers in the bottom left. You can change it so that you have expertise, maybe from a homebrew thing. You can change all that stuff. There's armor class tracking, which is automatic. You can set it to custom, so you could be like, this custom class has uh, an armor class defined by strength and constitution. The initiative modifier is altered by this class. The initiative style is always advantage, for example. Like you can change that inside of just this little gear. Now, Something else, you can go into the, the gear section right on the right, you can go down and there's character mancer options. There are two buttons. One is launch level one character mancer. What this does is this wipes the character sheet and starts them over as a level one character. It says cannot be undone because it is resetting your character. If you click launch level and character mancer, this is how you level your character up. So we're gonna click that one. Welcome to Character Mancer Level Up. So when you hit levels, you have even more options. <laughs> uh, it says level one plus one. So this is me saying like, how many levels is this character leveling up? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, refreshing should help. So this is how many levels your character can level up. If you wanted to level them up six levels because like you're going to be starting at level six, you literally can just do that here. You get the base sheet done, you go into launch level character mancer, and then you would define them as level seven. So earlier living music, oh, I, I can show you real quick. It's very easy. So literally to get into the level up on your core sheet, you go to the gear, and at the very bottom of the right, launch level and character mancer. And if you decide you didn't actually wanna do that, you can just hit cancel, discard and exit. It doesn't save any of the changes that you made. But we're gonna continue just so we can keep going in. So then we get to levels and like it shows you class features, class features that are already defined if it's not a custom class. It shows at level two, you're gonna get Jack of all trades, Song of Rest, Magical Inspiration. Let's say we're actually gonna be at level six because we're starting at level six. That's the way we're starting the campaign or that's the way you're starting the one shot. So we're just gonna put level one plus five, which is total level six. You see that right there. Now, there's all of these colleges to pick from. But again, let's say uh, you wanted, I don't, you're not like positive on which college you're going to be. You can level your character up without selecting a subclass. You can do that because if you had like a custom, if you had custom features that you wanted to add, you can still do that without having to add in the ones that already exist. So if I wanted to click next, I could literally click next and I'm a level six bard, and it's not taking any of the things that are from a particular subclass. So when you're leveling up your character in, in Roll 20's Character Mancer, you're not required to pick a subclass. You can, because oftentimes people won't be using the homebrew stuff, but you don't have to. And if, let's say that I'm not actually leveling up my character in bard. So I hit put zero in the level one plus, plus, plus what, level one plus zero, and then underneath subclass features, 
I click that one to multi-class. And now let's say, you know what? I'm actually going to go bard with rogue. Let's do that. And we're playing level six. So I'm going to actually put five levels in rogue. Showing me all the abilities that are going to come into play. I can still pick my roguish archetype at this point. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, I am going to be an assassin rogue with the bard. Go ahead and click assassin. Tells you what the features coming with it are. Uh, and it even like lets you roll for your health. You can either roll health or you can do the average. The average is 20, but let's roll it. Ooh, came to a beat total of 23, which was a little bit better. So you know what? That it might actually be what it's worth it. So we're going to go ahead. Didn't get any of the levels in Bard, but all of the levels we got were 1 to 5 of Rogue. So we're just going to pick the extra stuff, Expertise of Deception and Persuasion, which is, you know what, that's fitting for a Bard too. Bard Rogue? Bard Rogue might be the way to go. So since we're using the Character Mancer, and we did hit level 4 in a particular class, in Dungeons and Dragons, you get the ability to either increase your ability score or you can select a feat. This is literally just where you do it. If you wanted to increase your ability score, you can just do that right here. Like, boom, 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 boom. But you know what? Let's let's go with a feat. Let's make them let's make them powerful. Uh, and I like the feat mobile because makes you faster attack they don't get an opportunity attack good for rogue good for bard let's blend it in so you see what it was before leveling bard one hp nine after leveling bard one assassin rogue five hp 37 oh yeah there's a whole bunch of room for homebrew and i use this all the time whenever i'm trying to make my homebrew stuff like it if i want the general warlock abilities up to like level eight. This is what I do. I would make a warlock that is level eight. I wouldn't pick their subclass, but I would have exactly what a level eight warlock could do. And then I get to the question of, okay, where do the abilities come up? Where can I add to it? How do I want to shape them with the stuff they already have? What stuff can I lean into? What stuff do I want to lean away from? What stuff do I want to bounce and balance off of? And it's, it's a lot of fun. So we're just going to go ahead and click apply changes building your character and boom it's all done so we're going to put back on the leather armor just clicking it again brings it us back to 13 uh speed is definitely wrong why is my speed wrong i think i broke something unless oh I don't think it's that my speed is wrong. <laughs> I think I'm carrying too much. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna, yeah. So that's another thing. That's another interesting thing. Uh, yes, currently my character is encumbered, <laughs> which is a problem. Um, encumbrance uh, is something that you can turn on and off <laughs> in the gear. So if you click the gear, you go to the right side, there's general options, there's an option for encumbrance. Right here. And I'm just going to click it off. You can ignore non-equipped items, weight, um, either one goes forward. Uh, so what I'm using for captions is Web Captioner. Uh, and it's a free to use program. You can literally just open the website, you get a link that lasts for 48 hours, you pop it into your broadcasting app, bing, bang, boom, you have captions. Super easy. And it just makes accessibility easier. So now... Okay, okay, okay. Speeds... I did something to my speed. We'll fix that. But <laughs> it did it did mess up because of encumbrance. Um, yes. But this, this, is, this is generally the character mancer. So we talked about the NPC sheet. So literally... My dog is very excited. Hello, Leo. <laughs> so literally, you can click the NPC button and it opens it up like an NPC character sheet. Now, there is going to be a little bit more information to fill in here, but 
instead of converting it like that, let's actually start over. Technically, we're going to make a character. iMac Osray. Hmm. Uh, we're just going to dump them in. Then we're going to go to character sheet and then create an NPC. This time we get that same character sheet that we saw before, but it's blank. And we're going to name them IMAX. IMAX is a medium fiend. And literally, like, this is this is me creating a homebrew. So it doesn't have to be exact. I can put it so I can put it I can put the numbers wherever I want. If I you know what their armor class is a 17. Um what type of armor are they wearing? Ooze armor. And there there are plenty of ways to calculate this stuff. There are plenty of <laughs> There are plenty of pieces of math, uh, hit die and stuff, and there is formulas for it that, to be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head all the time. And there are plenty of people that can do that immediately, and they're fantastic dungeon masters for it. Uh, I mean, and I'm just not that person. So, like, you know what? Let's let's give them a health of 67. Now it asks you, is there a formula? And we could make a formula. I could be like, mm, actually, let's let's give them eight hit dice. Let's make them d10s uh, and add tw uh, if there's eight. Eight times four, 32. Let's go 32. So it's going to roll the dice. 76. That's literally the opposite of 67. That's weird. So let's let's say 76. 8d10 plus 32. And attributes. Let's give them a 20. 20 that. 15 dex. 12 intelligence. A uh, 12 con. 12, 15. Now, none of this. None of this is perfect, ideal, uh, mechanical value or scaling. This is 100% just us being ridiculous and having fun full honesty full disclosure um but it's it's like you see how this stuff just starts translating into the npc sheets and then you just build it up something else that you can do is there are plenty of times when i have like so there are good lord the number of monsters that exist on the roll 20 sheets even just in the srd if if you've never seen <laughs> If you've never seen the array of monsters that are on this thing, uh, you will be astounded. Oh my gosh, I'm very warm. Uh, but let's put in an Avalith. Let's just drop one in. These things are horrifying. So these are also really nice to just pull up and reference when you're building your monsters. Because you might literally be like, oh, you know what? Actually, I want to build something that's like an Avalith, but I want it to be a little different. So... IMAX is actually a large aberration, level evil. 17, okay, natural armor, ooze armor. That fits, that fits. This is what the formula is for them. This is their fly, this is their fly. Well, I want to make them a little different. So you have plenty of character sheets and monsters that you can reference inside of the Roll20 uh, compendium. That is the word, thank you. And this is journal, thank you. All I had to do was hover over it. Technology is so convenient when we actually use it the way it lets us. Uh, but something that's even cool is you can even define token size. Like, is it is it just one block? Is it two? Is it three? Is it a spellcasting NPC? And then it asks you, what's the ability? Does it have reactions? You click that, it gives you option for reactions. Does it have legendary actions? And if so, how many does it have? Does it have mythic actions? But maybe I want them to not be an NPC. I can go back into here. Clicking all these buttons, clicking all these skills. And I'm like, ah, I take it back. I did actually want you to be an NPC. It's that easy. It's that literally easy. How about dragging a monster from the compendium? Yeah, let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What what monster do you want me to... Abominable beauty. Uh, oh, a monster from the compendium into the character sheet. That's a good question. Let's find out. I've actually, I don't think I've ever tried that. Oh, 
Really? Hold on, hold on. All right, iMac, you are being offered up uh, to become a beautiful. Let's just, let's just grab something random. Uh, <laughs> Abominable beauty. Hmm. Terrifying. Um, abyssal chicken. That's the one. Oh, yep. Okay. So we just drag in accepting drop from compendium. Wait. Oh, no. I made the abolith the chicken. So that's that's what that's interesting to me. I think it had to be an NPC character sheet. So all I had to do was literally like <laughs> turn <laughs> chickalith. <laughs> and that's so this this is this is part of why I like this show because it's it's experimenting and it's a conversation and it's very real and genuine because I was not trying to turn the abolith into an abyssal chicken, but the idea of an abyssal chicken abolith sounds worse because if you think of this thing but like it's now got feathers and tiny wings and goes um hmm. so yeah we're gonna we're gonna turn imac uh into an npc and we're just gonna drag in acid ant yes yeah, you can drop one to NPC. It'd be great to see a character sheet that can have a familiar or companion added to it, though. Oh, okay. So literally, um, the the reason those are actually separate is uh, for this reason. So, oh god, go away, go away, you terrifying creature. So let's say like, uh, iMac is actually the familiar of Bingo. That's that's why there's two separate uh, pieces. So that like if uh da, 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 da. if only if I'm the one who controls bingo, so I also control iMac, I make it so that iMac isn't in everybody's journal and iMac can only be edited and controlled by me. That's actually why they exist like that. Can you turn the abyssal chicolith into a player character? Oh no. No, no, thank God you can't. I mean, te well, technically, <laughs> technically, yes, because the stats do go over. Oh, God. What a horrifying existence. So actually, yes, if, if you really wanted to, you could literally have the abyssal chickalith uh, named Acid Ant have all of these. Literally just click them, turn them into, turn off NPC so they become a creature and that's horrifying. Why would you do that? Yes, but yeah, exactly that. It's a super easy way to make sidekicks. So if, if there was one particular like, uh, let's just look for Bandit. Because Bandit, Bandits pop up everywhere. If you wanted an NPC that was a companion and you didn't want them to, you wanted, you wanted to just base them off of something. You could literally just make a bandit and you could make a bandit like with the character sheet and we're going to name them Leo Trila. Trilia. That's true. Honestly, if you, if you say it on the forum, like the, the team who does the character mancer does I found out read those suggestions and ideas a lot. Like a lot of the improvements for the character mancer were made because of people literally just posting on the forums. And I didn't even know how effective they were until seeing that. It's a huge difference. So uh, we have our NPC and we're going ahead and we're going to take the bandit. Oh, I need to open it here. We're going to take the bandit and we're going to drop it right into the compendium. So now here's a companion character. And technically, if like they wanted a sidekick on this way, now literally it's Leo Tralia who has the stats of the bandit and you can still change it. Go into the name, Leo Tralia. 
has all of this stat stuff. If you want to make them a little bit stronger, a little bit weaker, you want to adjust their saves, you want to give them more reactions, you can. But this is a super easy way to just make companion NPCs, to just make familiars, to just make sidekicks or anything of that like. Especially if it's like, I really wanted them to have a character that was like a bandit or had the same abilities. You make the character sheet, drag and drop it in there, and then you don't have to start from scratch. You can edit any of this. So like, you know what? Leo Tralia is actually super good at Arcana. They have a bonus of 12. Don't do that. Don't, I would, I mean, you could, but like they're a, they're a CR 1 8th. So Leo comes out here with the scimitar, makes a slash with advantage. Uh, 11 5 does not work. Uh, but rolls Arcana. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna turn off always roll advantage because you can put on advantage toggle of the NPCs as well. Super freaking handy, actually. And we're gonna go. Oh, you know what? Leo can't hit with the scimitar, but uses their Arcana for. That's a twenty-six. Oh, it's also also. I don't think there's. I really don't think there's like stupid questions on this stuff, especially when learning. Um, but you know what? Like that is that is a great suggestion, Aki. Uh, I have a very stupid question, but I'm almost saying so we played a storytelling system. I wanted to auto like animes and how to, but it doesn't work. So we think about moving to another platform. Uh, so when you like, like, do you mean like automate the role system of getting it to, what do you mean by that? Just cause if we can help you fix it, like we will, that's, that's why we do this stuff. We do this because it's fun and we like playing games. I realized this was too far over to the left. No. My dog is back in his stealing thing phase, like a small bad child, and I adore him. But he needs to stop, but he can't be stopped. So yes, this is literally, so I'm going to stumble over my words until I figure out what I'm trying to say. This is why I wanted to sit and talk about this stuff. Because the character mancer itself is a bit intimidating, just looking at it. But uh, literally just sitting down and going through makes a difference. If there was some part of the character mancer that you didn't know you could do it, I hope this helps. Uh, I'm even gonna look at a couple other things. Let's look at bingo. If we go back to, there's so much customization in the gear. You can change your carrying capacity modifier, change their spellcasting level. You can add on halfling luck if they don't have it. Are they an arcane fighter? Are they an arcane rogue? If you wanted to uh, add the third or fourth subclass for that stuff, you can do it here. HP modifiers, armor class tracking. There's so much. There's so much. Global attack modifier field. Like all of these, look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. Even here uh, with the sneak attack, actually. When I want to roll, if I'm playing a rogue, maybe I don't have uh, the ability to do sneak attack. So I just click hand axe. I click the name over here. It rolls. I click the name of the chat and then it does damage. So let's say I use my hand axe. That's in that one. We're not going to, don't look at that one. Don't look at my shame. I use my hand axe again and it's a 22. And the DM's like, oh, actually, you would get sneak attack here. So you see global damage modifier down here. I can click that. And when I click hand X, it rolls sneak attack and my slashing damage. It rolls it all together. It's so convenient. Roll 20 is it's very convenient. Hmm. Ice fell down. Weird. But yeah, so you can automatically have it set to roll that stuff. If you have items and they exist in the compendium, uh, literally we can go, I want a long sword. Can type in long sword. There's a couple different ones, like the magic ones or the regular ones. I literally just click long sword, accepting drop from compendium, and it pops up. And it doesn't just pop up in just the one section. It pops up with the longhorn one hand and longhorn two. Long hand. 
long sword one hand, long sword two hand. Because if you do it one handed, it's a 1d8. You do it two handed, it's a 1d10. So it actually sets that up for you for the difference. That easy. You can drag and drop armor in that way and then come down here, select it, turn it on and off. You can drag in items that way and it'll drop it into your stuff down here. It'll add in how much it weighs. It'll even add in like just the amount of them if you wanted more than one. If you have, so I have five rations down here. I could literally put three. You see how my weight changes? That stuff is consistently going. It can do, it can, like it's, the character sheet, the character sheet takes a minute to get used to it, especially on, on any sense. Uh, a character sheet takes time getting used to it. Many people play Dungeons and Dragons. Many people play 5e. And even if we're accustomed to how a lot of the stuff works, when you're trying to do it in a different medium, it's a whole new learning curve. It's a whole new learning experience. It'll calculate your passive wisdom. You can add in what other things you actually wanted to calculate. Let me see. There is... Ooh, I didn't actually realize, but so there is an alternative for casting that is spell points instead of spell slots. And you can actually turn on spell points as the calculation for your spell stuff. And I didn't even realize that. And that's the kind of thing that I would love to do more of because that's I'm used to that with like role playing games of like video games and stuff. You can change your critical range. You can customize so much of this character sheet to be exactly who and what you want them to be. Oh, I love this stuff. I realize I'm turning into a data nerd and I am no longer trying to fight it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look in the forum, actually, Cajun, there are things that will tell you how to uh, have the system calculate those. Yep, I have I have seen people do that because I had to look to find it as well. Yeah. So this, if you were ever hesitant on being like, I don't know if I can make the Rule 20 character sheet, character mancer work for me because I, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons and I like using the maps and I like the idea, but I'm nervous. I don't think I can actually make it work. I wanted to show you in less than an hour, sat here and just messed around with it, figured out things that I didn't even know worked as well as they did. Oh my God, I didn't realize Bingo had a 10 deception. And persuasion. Oh, it's because of the expertise. Rogues, man. But you can just drop that stuff in. And if you wanted to, maybe you get a custom item that does not exist in the compendium. You can click add. So there's, it looks, again, it looks more confusing than it is. Name, which is just asking the name of the weapon. Sword of Sadness. Uh, what is the attack bonus? And it is asking you, is it any of the base stats or is it a spell attack bonus? Uh, let's go with the spell attack bonus. And is it proficient? Yes. And there's like the plus whatever, whatever. So that's like, is it a plus one, plus two, plus three weapon? That kind of things. It asks your range. This one's just going to be five feet because it's a close range weapon. So it's going to ask you damage. How much damage does it do? What are the damage dice? Is it a 3d6? Is it a 1d10? Is it, let's make it a 2d20 because the Sword of Sadness is infinitely powerful and it crits, uh, you can even change the crit range. So we're gonna make it 18 to 20. Crits on an 18 to 20. God, this is the worst thing ever. And it can have two types of damage, actually. It could have 2d20, and that type is slashing. But it also has 2d4 saddening damage. <laughs> so the first damage, it asks you what the bonus is that it's going to be to this weapon. Uh, and this is like generally a strength bonus. Like that that makes sense. So you're swinging it. Uh, now it's asking you, is there a bonus to the second type of damage? There is not going to be a bonus to the second type of damage. Saddening damage. Uh, and is there a saving throw versus like a spell effect? 
Uh, and you know what? Let's make there a saving throw. There's a saving throw of a charisma save versus their spell save DC. The save effect. You feel overwhelming joy. If you fail, you feel like you need a sandwich made of cotton. Don't, don't ask. I have no answers. So now we... Uh, so now we have a sort of sadness. A custom-made weapon put into our character sheet on the character mancer. So we go ahead. Uh, we are not going to roll with advantage. But we're going to go ahead and click it. Why is that a one? Why is that a... I... I broke something. You see how often I do this? Oh. That shouldn't happen. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, well that that makes more sense. Let's see. Oh no. Why is there a negative three? Why is, okay. Hmm. We're gonna parse this. Strength, five feet, damage. Let's look at the math. 1d20, 18 to 20, 15, wait, minus two, oh! So for some reason, uh, I actually only had to put a single number for the crit range, pretty sure. <laughs> because it's, uh, it's subtracting 20. I'm going to just put an 18 there. Let's see if that makes a difference. I still wrote a nat one. But it worked. So we made our sort of sadness. So let's roll one more time. All right, 21. If you fail, you feel like you made need a cotton, a sandwich made of cotton. Then you click the word. Sneak attack. Five slashing. Five saddening. Out of 2d20, I rolled a two and a three. We're just gonna let that one go. But this this is this is literally how easy it is. Um I've been having conversations like over and over and over that sometimes the most important thing is just showing people how this stuff works. You show people how it works and then you give them the tools to do it. You can make your own custom weapons. Weapons, that are, if they already exist, you can just drag and drop them in. If you're leveling up your spellcaster, you click spells, and then you can, you're gonna get a lot of spells. So you can filter results, click filter results right there. It'll ask you, what book is it from? Um, it'll ask me, what class is it for? And you know what, actually we're looking for bard spells. And we're looking for level one. Apply filters. Boom. And then it gives you all of the level one bard spells right then and there. And it's like, you know what? I actually really, uh, in game, my character learns charm person. You click charm person, drag it in. It's in there. Comprehend languages, drag it in there. Cure wounds, drag it in there. And that stuff is already in. You can click, look at it, see what it says. You want to put it in chat. Again, you just click the speech bubble drops it in there for you for a description. If it's a ritual, it'll have the nice little R tag right next to it. If it's a concentration, it'll have the nice little C. And then you see V, S, M next to them as well. That's literally just verbal somatic material. So this is made to make your life easier, as easy as possible. There are so many things that Roll20 has done for the character mancer to try to make that convenient. And there's still many more. Like they've they posted about uh, what interface. So this is this is just the Roll20 character mancer. Roll20 character mancer for D and D five E. This is it is it is made to be easy, and it's the kind of thing that when you see something new, it's a little overwhelming. And I've repeated myself a couple times, but I get it. Cause I remember when I was first trying to learn how this worked, I had no idea what I was doing. And I just sat and learned. And 
when I realized that it was doing the work for me, especially with the character mancer's introduction, I may or may not have pages and pages of just like custom classes and characters that I've built to reference while I'm homebrewing stuff. Because it makes rolling dice easy. When when you need to run digital dice, yeah, no, I'm glad, Maiden. So we're we're going to one more time. I'm just going to speed run through it. And let's make God, I hate uh Shimu Omiyo. Shimu Omiyo, we're just gonna run through the character mancer super fast. One more time. Sorry to man. We're gonna customize the origin like with Tasha's. We're gonna go through and we're gonna make a bear folk because that's an option. We're gonna make them strong and we're gonna make them chaotic good. Uh chosen proficiencies. We're gonna add in Northern as a proficiency. Oh, uh living music. Previously you asked about um Previously you asked about like custom stuff for classes. You can also do custom races inside of the Roll20 character mancer if you wanted to as well. You could name it, you could uh, change what bonuses they got, alignment, speed, proficiencies, all of that. You can do that right inside of making the character as well. So if you wanted to make a custom race and custom class, you do have that option here. And when you do that, you can actually access it again inside of your game. Got you. Uh, what's a Squatch? Weird. Nah, I'm just gonna go Orc, that's easy. Uh, Orc is increasing their intelligence and their wisdom using the Tasha's rules. All of this stuff, give them skill proficiencies, dark, uh, nature and insight. Class? Um, let's make them... Let's make them a fighter. athletics history and this this is this is why like it makes making extra characters so fast in my opinion because it's like sometimes even when i'm just like not even entirely paying attention but i'm like i want a fighter i don't really care what they're particularly good at and i'm just kind of curious to see what it is uh roll for stats we're just gonna roll for stats roll 4d6 drop the lowest that's a pretty good array uh give them a 14 strength 13 dex no con, low intelligence, decent wisdom and charisma. Let's give him a custom background. Santa, proficient at, Santa's proficient in the blade. Uh, so we'll give him proficiency in the short sword. Uh, <laughs> language, Santa speaks abyssal and Infernal. I don't know what's happening. Yes. Yeah. Custom background features. Oh, oh no. A fear aura of 30 feet when you approach a... <laughs> Lord. Symbol of Santa. Don't. I <laughs> great Rafiki. Uh, you came into a point where I just made a custom background called Santa. Um, so that's a pretty accurate representation of what today is like. <laughs> Reindeer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It's an orc named Santa. I mean, it's an orc named Sh Shimu. Uh, whose background, you come from Santa background. So if you ever want to like mess around, add in custom stuff, super easy. Super easy. Uh, so we have Shimu, the fighter level one, orc, Santa background, and now if you go down, literally the custom stuff that we put in right here, 
a fear aura of 30 feet when you approach when you approach a symbol of Santa. The custom background stuff is added in there, as well as the other racial features and the class features. It just gets dropped in. Character is made. You have anything else you want to add into? You can come over to the compendium. There are feats, items, spells, equipment, anything. And if I'm like, if I'm like, you know what? Actually, Sant Santa's figure is going to get the chef feet. I can just drag and drop in chef. Drops it in. That's it. Is that easy? It, you know, I'm not going to say it's smarter than people, but. Web captioner knows a lot more than I do sometimes. I will say it once. I'll say it again. Um, literally all of this stuff is just, it's just learning. Like if, whether I'm talking about web captioner or whether I'm talking about the character master, it's all just learning. I uh, I started doing this show, wanting it to be just easy, easily more accessible or easy for people to use. Um, I wanted to just show that the character mancer is it's not as intimidating as it seems like it is. Those base stats look like it could belong to a reindeer. Maybe they do, Aki. Aki? Aki. Aki. Aki May. But maybe they do. Maybe Shimu is actually gonna multiclass into Druid and be a rain and wild shape into a reindeer because of the Santa background. Who knows? But there is currently a character mancer for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. There is a character mancer for Call of Cthulhu. I don't have a specific timeline for them. Uh, but there is a character mancer coming out for a couple more games soon in the future. They will make life very easy. And allow you to play even more games on Roll20. There's a character mancer for Burn Bright, which is our original sci-fi setting and game. And there's gonna be a lot more Burn Bright stuff coming too. And actually, one of these days, maybe we'll we'll go over Burn Bright's character mancer. Yeah. But yeah, the level and character mancer, it makes it so easy. If you and if you didn't see that before, literally, if you want to level your character up, all you do is you go to the gear right next to spells, launch level and character mancer. And it's so fast. Let's uh, let's we're gonna we're not gonna level them up in that. We're going to oh, this is we're gonna make them very obnoxious. Just to show you how well this works, we're gonna give them a level in cleric, and we're gonna give them a level in paladin, and we're gonna give them a level in nope, too many spells. Although although just to be clear, if you do pick things with multiple spells, it will do the calculation for you of how many spells you should have. So like let's do four in wizard, three in paladin, two in cleric. God, this is gonna be horrible. Um, and we're just gonna roll average health for all of them. And we're gonna roll health for all of them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not so ooh. Uh good lord. Beer domain? Yeah, we're just gonna hit it. We're doing this live. Oath of Thunder. Blood Mage. So you're getting all of these features, all of this extra stuff, all of these abilities. That's a lot to keep track of. It's a lot to read about. Uh, if you click the class features, if you click the eye, it'll actually go to that thing to tell you what's happening. So I could click subclass features. It'll pull up the info of that subclass. Oh, it already has it up. I don't know why I was doing that. Um, yeah, so like Oath of Thunder, it'll pull up Tenets of Thunder, Crush the Abomination, Cosplay the Spells that you come from, Channel Divinity, blah, blah, blah. So there's so much in here, but I'm like, you know what? I just want to click next. So what it's going to do is when you click next, it's going to show all of the features that are going to come in from your levels. Now, generally, if you're leveling it once, twice, or just leveling up in a single class because you're starting at level six or level eight or 12 for a campaign, way less to keep track of. But like a fool or a genius, depending on who you ask, I picked uh, three more multi-classes. So I get to... Oh, I have proficiencies in those already, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, so it's literally just going through telling me all of the stuff that I would get if I wasn't unreasonable. Uh, let's go ahead and just get defense in there. Just throw it in there. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna just gonna up strength because of four levels in wizard. Otherwise, I still wouldn't have gotten anything. Now, you see, you see what's happening here. I think I broke it. I don't think that should say four four one five. Oh God, did you s did you see that expand? Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I mean, well, I get ten cantrips, so we're just gonna. And thankfully for me, it is keeping track. Chill touch, Claw of Darkness, Clockwork Bolt. Oh gosh. 15, oh God, this was a mistake. Why did you all let me do this? Why did nobody stop me? But that's also my fault for asking if I could rather than if I should. Okay. Oh, well, accidentally broke it and chose 16. Oh, that was 16 total. That's fine. That's fine. Good Lord. I mean, this is a great stress test. Why did nobody stop me? Why did none of you tell me this was a terrible idea? That's true. You do feed the chaos. Jack of all trades, master at nothing. <laughs> oh my god. They're What level are they? What level? That's... Oh my god, they only have 22 health. But, but, <laughs> all of the abilities that you selected while using the character mancer work. <laughs> and all of the cantrip attacks are now popped up into this thing. Now, The spellcasting ability, uh, let's let's focus it on wizard and go with intelligence. So you can you can actually click that and change that just in case. Uh, in doing so, it does <laughs> it does work. Um, and all the cantrips are in there. Eldritch blast. Oh my god! Do you see? Fifteen lay on hands, ten lay on hands, one divine sense. I did something. <laughs> I don't know why I think I did something. Oh no. <laughs> Wait. Why does it go five, ten, fifteen? What did I do? <laughs> Huh. Is that a plus four to hit at level five? Uh, so this character is higher than level five because let's let's go back to the character mancer. Uh, just so we can take a look. They are. Mm, they are level 10. They are currently level 10 and have 22 health. But, but, 
Oh, there's three levels in Paladin. But. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we know it's possible. We know it's possible and it works. And hey. I got all these spells. I have four spell slots. But I got all these spells. And like it'll it'll do the counting for you if you wanted it to, or you could adjust how many slots you have remaining manually. That is something that you can actively just do. And if you need to roll death saves, you can. That's a nat one on the death save. I don't think this character would last very long. Wrong. Long doing anything. <laughs> a crit fail on the death save says it all for this character. It really does. It really does. Shemu Omeo. Uh, well, personally, I think they have been a great, a great test of what the character Mancer can create. You know, this, oh my God, maybe this is rattled before they die, but Prince, that's highly possible. Yeah, 10 hit dice. Leo. I'm feeding my dog because that's my child. Um, wow, I think we really, <laughs> I think we definitely pushed the brink of what the character manager can do to show. But I hope that like, A, this was actually informative. You, If you didn't know things about the character manager, there was something that you learned. You saw how easy it was to do this, how easy it is to literally just, can we push it further? How? How can we push it further? Good, good. I'm glad it was. I'm glad it was informative. Do a character with one level in every class. I mean, I guess I think technically you actually. I. I don't know if the character manager actually lets us. I think it lets us do a max of four. For now i just showed up and got my mind blown i'm glad that's that's the fun like showing up and then just seeing everything that it can actively do that's the fun that's the fun of learning and creating so it looks like we can't make one of every class yet but it's possible but there is there is plenty of stuff that the character mancer can actively do Plenty of things you can actually develop. It's a great way to make characters. And whenever you want to make a new character, you can just add character. That's it. Character manager pops up again. Now, if you want to get rid of potentially an abomination that you have created that is... It is just... <laughs> goes against everything that the divine stand for you can launch level one and remake them in an image that uh does not horrify someone who looks into their eyes oh my god they're a magic caster level seven why but there are plenty of ways to use the character mancer especially when you're creating your 5e characters if you are a dm or you're a player just trying to figure out who your character is this is a great way to help you get that together this is a little bit of chaos, but if you've been here before, I say all the time that you are chaotically creative. And I've realized I am no exception to that rule <laughs> at all. So I'm glad that if you were here and you learned something, I'm glad that you learned something. If you were here and you saw that I am just a manifestation of the most chaotic that well, it's not possible because I'm sure that all of you could do worse. 
But this was just a little look into what you can do with the character mancer. And if you haven't messed with it before, I enthuse you to go to. If you have messed with it before, but you're trying to do more homebrew stuff, this is a great place to test those ideas because you can make the custom races, you can make the custom classes, you can make the custom backgrounds, and they stay inside of that instance that you made so you can reference them again. It's a great way to do that, and it's a great place to archive them or at least have them when you're designing and developing. It's what I do all the time, and it helps me having them in one place and then be able to test them immediately. So never forget that you are chaotically creative in the absolute best ways. Um, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, Maiden, I'm glad you came. So to, again, to those of you who are watching this live, like I appreciate you coming in to hang out with me and just see how the character mancer works. See what you can do with it. If you're watching this on YouTube later and you were someone that didn't absolutely know how it worked, didn't know how to make your character for 5e using this thing, I hope it helped. I hope that you're a little more inspired. Or if you're someone that did know how it works and you're just like, I want to do more custom stuff. I want to do more stuff of my own design. How do I do that? I hope that helped you too. The entire point of this show is to, oh, there goes a the dog. The entire point of this show is to make you a better storyteller, to be more comfortable with what you do, and to allow you to play more games in a happy way. That's all I could ask for. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your day. And you are chaotically creative in the very best way. Have a wonderful day. Uh, and yes, so we will be back uh, to later today at 1 p.m. PST for some Star Wars on this channel. Go do whatever you need to do. Come hang out. Uh, and just create. This is our time. This is our time to be f excited and create and enjoy and tell stories. And it's going to stay that way. Keep it up. I believe in you.